Chairman for this event, Mr. Alfred Boyd, former regional chairman of the MPP in Greater Accra Region. The co-chairman of the event, Mr. Kenwood Nu also, former regional chairman of the MPP for Volta Region. All MPP regional chairmen present, all constituency chairmen present, the faculty members of the University of Professional Studies, executive members and members of the NPP, special invited guests, members of TESCON, students of the University of Professional Studies and other students here present, friends of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to be here in this great institution, the University of Professional Studies, to deliver this speech which marks my maiden entry into the flabbergast embrace of the new patriotic party. The topic for today's lecture is the future of the economy of Ghana, transforming agriculture for the prosperity of all of us. I'm pleased to mention that we are live on several media platforms and we have Ghanaians tuning in from all across Ghana and the diaspora, as well as many Africans and the international community. I thank the University of Professional Studies for providing this platform for this amazing event of mine. When I began my journey into politics in Ghana in 1990, with the formation of the United Kingdom branch of the Dankwa Buzia Club, with stalwarts like the late Mr. J.H. Mensah. Little did I know that one day I will be contesting for the highest position of the new patriotic party. <laughs> At this moment, I cannot help but recall my childhood with my father, Ochiame Bafo Oseyakoto, who left many lessons in his wake for us all, including myself, to learn from and build on. Now, as you might imagine, as a young boy, I was not always happy following my father around, whether it was to Manchia Palace or to the northern regions of this country. Like many young boys my age, there were times I would have preferred to have fun with my friends or stay by my mother's side. My mother, was a professional teacher back then, and is alive today at the blessed age of 95. <laughs> Watching my father's commitment to the public service, both as a traditional leader and a modern political leader at the time, defined the key moments in my life as I grew up. He instilled in me the passion for service and to serve my motherland, Ghana, with all that is within me, even if it costs me an arm and a leg. For those who know me well, I'm known to be, in brackets, confident, very passionate, and to have strong views on many subjects. Frequently, I've often been perceived as being too serious and arrogant but that is far from the reality. In fact, I'm a very friendly person. Very open, open hearted and an affable person. As I stand before you here today to share my vision for the future, I'm moved by the immense support that I have received so far, ever since I announced my intention to contest the flag bearership of the MPP race. I never knew there were so many who have quietly followed my progress in politics over the years and continue to believe in me. It is also intentional that we, choose this, we chose this venue as the entry point to my contest. Universities are citadels for ideas that generate the innovations for sustainable development. They provide not just 
educated workers or job seekers, but knowledge workers who are able to, uh, to uh, expect to create jobs in a society. The future of Ghana depends on you, students. Dear students, what you are learning in your various academic pursuits today will determine whether we as a nation can meet our greatest challenges in the future. We need every single one of you to develop your talents, skills, and your intellect so you can help us, the older ones, to solve our problems. The nation's most difficult problems are here with us. I strongly believe agriculture will lift Ghana out of poverty and assure us not only of food and nutrition security, but also generate the necessary resources for the development of the other sectors, including industry, health, education, and infrastructure in the medium to long term. Mr. Chairman, globally, there is a new economic order emerging. This is evident from the current economic challenges confronting the world. Food, renewable energy, water, and big data will drive this new order. Africa, and for that matter, Ghana, has the potential to lead this new order by strengthening all sectors of the economy and transforming agriculture sustainably to feed and enrich its people. Whilst contributing to the food and nutrition needs of the 9.7 billion people by 2050, as estimated by the United Nations Population Fund, Africa is plagued with a difficulty in transforming its agricultural sector into a driver of sustainable development, food security, and improved livelihood. And I think that Africa has not done enough. Over 200 million Africans continue to struggle with food insecurity. This issue has been further deepened by COVID-19, the effects of climate change on agricultural production, political instability across the continent, macroeconomic instability, and the raging debt crisis that many African governments face, including our own. Despite these obstacles, the agricultural sector offers immense and significant opportunities for transforming Africa's economy from a net import of food to the provider of food to the rest of the world. In Ghana here, we are facing many challenges, such as high rate of unemployment at 13.9% as at the second quarter of 2022, high rate of inflation at 54% as of February 2023, as well as the economic crisis which we find ourselves in now. Mr. Chairman, in most advanced countries today, agriculture was the driver of economic development. Brazil, China, Malaysia, and Thailand are recent examples of the agricultural success stories. The European Union gives us an example of how investments in agriculture can impact economic transformation. The development of improved seeds of crops through plant breeding between 2000, the year 2000 and 2020, led by Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and the United Kingdom, contributed immensely to the EU economy, including increased yields, improved market, increase in wealth, food supply, security, and trade. These prevented the European Union from becoming a net importer in all major crops, including wheat and other cereals. The development and scaling up of improved varieties of crops was indispensable for combating hunger and malnutrition in the EU, making food available to 114 million of its citizens and increasing social welfare by significant margins. This injected 26 billion euros into the European economy, as well as created and secured more than an additional 90,000 direct jobs in this agricultural value chain. Mr. Chairman, Ghana's dream of using agriculture as a driver for economic development can be traced back as far as the 1920s, 
when the then governor Gordon Gadget's bed made pronouncement backed by initial investment to make agriculture work. Successive governments since then have made various attempts towards agricultural development in this direction. Yet there has been inadequate commitment to full agricultural transformation. However, as the immediate past Minister for Food and Agriculture, I am confident that the Akufuado government has laid a solid foundation upon which a thriving, sustainable agriculture can be built in all the coming years. Mr. Chairman, may I seek your indulgence to present to this audience the foundations that have been laid under my watch in the six years of my stewardship of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Food security. The government made significant investment in farm inputs in order to increase agricultural productivity, to raise incomes of farmers, and to achieve national food security. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture procured and distributed a total of 1.4 million metric tons of fertilizer and 93,192 metric tons of improved seeds, which were distributed to over 1.7 million farmers from 2017 to 2021. As a result of these measures, Mr. Chairman, maize yields increased from 1.8 metric tons per hectare to 4 metric tons per hectare. Soya yields increased from one metric ton per hectare to 2.5 metric tons per, he per hectare in the period from 2017 to 2021. With the famous planting for food and jobs intervention, production of maize has risen, doubled from 1.7 million metric tons in 2016 to 3.6 million metric tons in 2021 as the famous MC mentioned in the introduction. Soya from 143,000 metric tons to 230,000 metric tons over the same period. An estimated investment of 2.6 billion Ghana cities was made by government as subsidy on improved seeds and fertilizers for the period 2017-2021. The value of production from the application of these subsidized inputs of seeds and fertilizer is estimated at 47.5 billion Ghana cities. Isn't that ma ma a major achievement? If I took 2.6 cities from government to subsidize fertilizer and seeds to farmers, and they gave me 47 and a half cities. I mean, I think that all banks should be giving me money to develop agriculture. <laughs> this is a huge economic rate of return on public expenditure on the farm subsidy program. In 2017, 202,000 farmers benefited from planting for food and job subsidy program. By 2021, the beneficiaries had gone to 1.7 million farmers. Out of a total farmer population of 3.1 million in Ghana, as captured by the agricultural census in 2018, which I conducted the first in 38 years. Tree crop diversification. Ghana has fallen into an almost perpetual cycle of dependency on, a, on external financial support from the International Monetary Fund and other bilateral partners to sustain our economy. In 66 years of our independence, Ghana has approached the IMF on 17 different occasions to borrow. The lesson from our journey with the IMF and the bilateral donors is indicative of the urgent need to expand the export earning capacity of the economy of Ghana. In the short to medium term, only the agricultural sector can establish that capacity to achieve sustained rapid economic growth. 
I strongly believe that prioritizing agriculture is a sure way for achieving the accelerated growth needed in other sectors of the economy and creating the much needed jobs for our people, especially the youth. During my tenure as the Minister for Food and Agriculture, I initiated the establishment of the Tree Crop Development Authority under an Act of Parliament, Act 1010, in the year 2019. By the following year, 2020, the Tree Crop Development Authority had been established in Kumasi. The authority seeks to coordinate and promote development of six tree crops, cashew, rubber, oil palm, coconut, mango, and shea. The goal of the authority is to develop, produce, and distribute the selected cash crop seedlings to farmers so as to produce and generate a combined potential export earnings of between 6 to 12 billion CDs every year after the 8 to 10 years of its implementation. 6 to 12 billion dollars a year. If this organization is taken care of very well, we'll be able to, 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 to generate that kind of resource into our economy. We wouldn't need an IMF for anybody else. At their full development, the additional 6 to 12 billion per year in earnings can complement the less than 2 billion annual earnings from cocoa. The TCDA was designed to receive a seed fund of $15 million, only $15 million, in the first three years of its operation. Unfortunately, it is, it is in its third year of operation, it has so far received only $1.3 million, equivalent to only a quarter of what is needed to take off such a very important strategic operation. By prioritizing the tree crop subsector, we would have weaned off our financial dependency on the IMF and other bilateral donors. If we had started this journey decades ago, we would have been reaping the economic benefit for the prosperity of all. In Cote d'Ivoire, total annual export earnings from five cash crops, cashew, cocoa, coffee, rubber, and palm oil, fetches that economy some eight billion dollars every year compared to the less than two billion dollars that we do in Ghana. Cote d'Ivoire, we started this program decades ago, has been enjoying these economic benefits of tree crops all these years. Cocoa. In addition, the National Cocoa Rehabilitation Program has been designed to renew the productive capacity of the cocoa industry. The program was launched in 2020 to scale up the promotion and production of cocoa to provide more income to the economy and farmers and create more jobs. As a result of the success of the program, thousands of farmers who had abandoned their cocoa farms due to the devastating effects of the cocoa swollen shoot virus disease have returned to their farms and have visited a lot of such farms in North, Western North region around Serioso, Asawinso, and other places. And you'll be del delighted to see the results after only two and a half years of implementation. An important part of the program for the cocoa rehabilitation is to support the private sector to expand local cocoa processing, vigorous promotion, to boost domestic and international consumption, and promote market expansion of the export of cocoa products into new markets. The National Cocoa Rehab Rehabilitation Program, when fully implemented, will generate more foreign exchange earnings from cocoa. Horticultural development through greenhouse production. Mr. Chairman, during my time as Minister of Agriculture, I implemented the construction of three greenhouse training centers with an attached commercial unit at Dawinya here in Greater Accra, Akumadan in Ashanti region, and Bodiasi in the central region for training. So far, 537 youth in high quality, has been trained in high quality vegetable production. 
These vegetables are sold to high-end shops such as Palace Mall, ShopRite, Starbucks, KFC, and Burger King in Tema, Accra, and in Kumasi. As part of the training, 400 and 540 youth, trainees, and students from various tertiary institutions in agriculture were sent to Israel for an 11-month paid internship to gain practical experience in modern farming practices. These were part of the efforts to attract youth into agriculture. The returnees from Israel are assisted to set up their own farm enterprises, rearing for food and jobs. The promotion of protein in the diet of Ghanaians is critical to the health of the nation. The livestock, so, the livestock subsector plays a significant role in the provision of proteins in our food. There's a plan at the ministry to create a poultry development authority to promote the industry. Under my watch, the veterinary services have seen substantial improvements. We have installed new laboratories, re-equipped old ones, and recruited 500 additional veterinary personnel. We have also encouraged and supported local meat processing and substantially expanded soya bean production all to support the livestock industry. Nevertheless, Ghana's poultry industry still faces, still faces very serious challenges. Key amongst them is the high cost of feed and the high importation of poultry products onto our market. There is a double-edged solution to this. The first is to regulate the importation of chicken and other meat products into the country. And secondly, to address the cost of feed. This will be tackled as a major responsibility of the incoming Grains Development Authority, which I will speak on later. As part of its responsibilities, the, the Grains Development Authority will purchase grains at a time of the harvest when the prices are low, store the grains, and release them to the poultry farmers and other stakeholders during uh, the dry season when prices are very high. In addition, when seasonal prices rise, various interventions have been made to increase production in the other areas of livestock. Agricultural mechanization. The ministry since 2017 has received and distributed a total of 12,200 pieces of agricultural machinery and equipment from Brazil, Czech Republic, and China at 40% subsidy to the farmers. The machinery includes tractors, harvesters, irrigation equipment, food processing, and post-harvest management equipment. Additionally, a tractor assembly plant is being established near Ejusu in Ashanti region. Processes have been concluded with the Exim Bank of India to provide a facility to import $150 million worth of farm and agro-processing machinery. Shipments are expected in Ghana in the course of this year, 2023. Of the machinery so far received, 32 district assemblies and selected private sector operators have benefited from a scheme to create agricultural mechanization centers to provide hiring services to both the small and the large scale farmers. Mr. Chairman, in addition to the five modules of the planting for food and jobs, discussed above, I led the creation of institutions to drive the gains made so far. Apart from the Tree Crop Development Authority, the institutions are as follows. Grains Development Authority, irrespective of limited resources and global crises such as COVID, uh, climate change, amongst others, under my leadership of the sector, Ghana has improved its food security index and made food available to all, all year round. The country has also been transformed into the breadbasket of West Africa, maintaining self-sufficiency sufficiency in our stable crops. This is a practical example of agriculture providing resilience to the Ghanaian economy. To this end, there is currently a bill before Parliament for the establishment of the Grains Development Authority. 
This bill seeks to amend the Grain Development Authority Law of 1970 under Dr. Buzia Act 324. The authority will be responsible for promoting research and development, production, marketing, and exports. It will be a regulatory body. Agricultural credit. A memorandum proposing legislation requiring all commercial banks to increase loadable funds to agriculture and its value chain have been submitted to cabinet for approval and onward submission to parliament to pass a law to that effect. This legislation is to address the acute shortage of agricultural credit in this country. Only 3.1% of total loanable funds in this country by our banks go to agriculture. And when you examine that 3.1, you find that more than half of that is for the purchases of cocoa. So it's really trading, not, not agriculture as such. Also in the pipeline are draft cabinet memoranda for the establishment of the Horticultural Development Authority and the Poultry Development Authority. Mr. Chairman, I'm aware of the government, quote, government is too big mantra, but we should not forget how institutions like Cocoa Board have served this country so well. These new commodity institutions, These commodity institutions are designed on the Cocoa Board model. They are designed to spearhead development of targeted subsectors to support farmers to produce more for export and ensure the availability of nutritious food for consumers in Ghana. <laughs> Women in agriculture, Mr. Chairman, the global and national goal to achieve equality, equity, and inclusion for all women is a critical step for the economic empowerment of all women. I can see that the women are clapping more than the men. <laughs> the contribution of women in agriculture is extensive and includes the roles of providing labor for weeding, planting, harvesting, and processing, accounting for over 70% of food crop production in this country. Now I see the balance between the men and the women clapping. <laughs> Yet many women across the country involved in farming are plagued with issues of illiteracy, lack of knowledge or appreciation of technology, land acquisition and ownership issues, amongst many others. If these issues were addressed, productivity would be increased significantly to the benefit of, of all of us. Now, I want to share some personal experiences that I've had in the six years of my stewardship of the ministry. During my time as minister, I have traveled extensively across the country and learned important lessons on the fields of the farmers. I'll share a few with, it, with you. In a small village in the Volta region in 2018, I met a widow, Mawena, who grows maize, okra, garden eggs, and pepper to sell. <laughs> in order to feed 15 people in her household, which included five biological children, five other children that she also takes care of, and five grandchildren. I learned from Mawena that all she needed was a supply of improved seeds and some basic technology to triple her yields on the same size farm that he, she'd been operating for years. In moving forward, we must engage to create commonwealth that sees to the needs of the common people. There's a need for a new innovative business model. 
value addition, productive stakeholder engagement, including the youth, smallholder farmers, and large-scale farmers, all in agribusiness for adequate and affordable food and high-value export to fully benefit the gains from the sector. From a Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From a conversation I picked up with Yawadu, a tomato farmer in Akumadan in Offensive District, Lack of basic literacy skills results in making, making of poor farming decisions, which eventually affects its yield and profit. These include inability to read and make uninformed decisions to purchase ordinary seeds for the market rather than improve seeds. Fauzia Garaba, one of the many women in Yendi, cannot afford to buy fertilizer, certified seed, or even gain access to high tractor services for the timely plowing of her land. Most farmers in Ghana do not have access or the know-how to operate basic farming technologies and systems. Most do not own phones, and some of the few who have, who have may only use it for just making calls and receiving calls, but not have the know-how to access basic interventions delivered as a less via SMS to inform them of the weather forecast available markets for their produce, and so on. Mr. Mr. Chairman, today many farmers and agro-processors may be watching or listening to me as I speak. The stories of Mawena, Yawadu, and Fauzi Garaba may not be different from yours. In reality, many current and potential farmers across the country have yet to receive the much-needed education, technology, and support they need in order to succeed. I can confidently inform the lives of Mawena, Yawadu, and Fauzia, and value chain actors that government policies on agriculture will be formulated with their interests at the topmost consideration. <laughs> on the other side, there are stories to celebrate. At a Nigeria Farmers Forum, I encountered a field male farmer who said this at the forum, and I quote her, Honorable, in the past, farming was exclusively the exclusive domain of illiterates like us. But now one finds all kinds of professionals, including mechanics, teachers, nurses, doctors, and lawyers who have taken over our work. This is a clear manifestation of how planting for food and jobs has attracted professionals to farming. same forum, a former colleague of mine, an opposition member of parliament for the area, recounted how the PLJ program provided a catalyst for him to invest heavily in seed production. The program has also recorded thousands of such positive stories across various communities in Ghana. Last year in Asaman Kesi, I met two medical doctors who had hung up their stethoscopes to become full-time farmers. One was a coconut farmer and the other a food crop farmer. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I cannot end my stories without sharing one also personal experiences with the king of Mampusi, the Nairi who has been a farmer all his life. In December 2019, just before the COVID hit, when I visited his palace in Nalirugu, he was full of praises for PFJ. He informed me that for the first time in his community, stocks of new maize which were being harvested at the time of my visit had been brought into his barn when all stocks from the previous year, 2018, were still available. In previous years, that wasn't the case.
Mr. Chairman, the king was acknowledging the success of PFJ program in his kingdom. Mr. Chairman, while acknowledging that there is a lot of room for improvement in the PFJ, the story that I have shared provides some evidence that the implementation of the program has been a resounding success. As indicated earlier, government expenditure on improved seeds and fertilizers amounted to 2.6 billion Ghana cities. To optimize the gains of such investment, we must further invest in the education of farmers like Yerodu, wherever they are in this country. There is the, ed new, the need for a new innovative business model, value addition, productive stakeholder engagement, including the youth, smallholder farmers, and large-scale farmers, all in agribusiness. The new paradigm, the critical, critical success stories. Now, I want to go into areas that we need to look at very carefully. There is the urgent need for things to be done differently if we are to succeed in transforming our agriculture. The critical success factors in our transformation agenda will hinge on the following. Political will. Ghana has to prioritize agricultural transformation at the highest level of government through the implementation of a well-defined vision and strategy. The investment needed to achieve sustainable food systems will be non-negotiable in my vision to transform agriculture for the prosperity of The first Prime Minister of, uh, of India, Jara Nehru, once said, and I quote him, everything can wait but not agriculture, unquote. Everything can wait, but not agriculture, unquote. Governance structure. In addition to the economic management team headed by the vice president, there shall be a newly created agricultural management team chaired by the president himself to drive agricultural development. The AMT shall comprise seven agri-related ministries, namely food and agriculture, finance, trade and industry, lands and natural resources, transport, local government, rural development, and environment, science, technology, and innovation. <laughs> supply chain logistics and market access. To improve supply chain logistics and expand market access, infrastructure projects such as feeder roads, hospitals, housing, rural electrification, irrigation and storage will be an integral part of the transformation agenda. Big data and technology for evidence will be the basis for decision making. Significant investment shall be made in big data and technology for precise evidence-based decision making in partnership with the private sector. Agricultural policy must be driven by evidence. It is essential that policymakers, farmers and actors in the value chain are trained to access the benefits of data for decision making. Precision agriculture that gives farmers the ability to use inputs more effectively to increase productivity will be prioritized. We ensure that target users of technology are involved in every stage of the process. This will provide opportunities to empower the youth and create new jobs. Research and development. I shall appropriately fund the research endeavors of the diverse national agricultural research institutes, including the universities in areas such as agronomy, extension, plant breeding, integrated soil fertility, integrated pest and disease control, post-harvest management, and climate smart technologies. We need to curb the effects of climate change and sustain yields in farmers' fields. 
we must grow crops that are resilient to withstand drought, heavy rains, and heat. Sustainable investment in science, technology, and innovation in agricultural development will offer prosper uh, prosperity to all of us, including smallholder farmers. I shall establish an appropriate regulatory framework to leverage private sector investment across all sectors and promote the efficient distribution of agro inputs. In addition, the regulatory framework will seek to develop platforms for agricultural innovations, output market structures, and incentives that allow for the full realization of the value of increased production. A well-funded and competitive private sector can manage and allocate scale and capital to scale up agro-processing, value addition, and drive long-term sustainable agribusinesses for uh, job creation. A comprehensive strategy will be adopted to develop the human capital needed to take innovation to scale along the entire agricultural commodity chain. This will include farmer field schools, demonstra demonstration plots, development of agro traders, training of agricultural extension agents, and value chain actors to improve efficiency. We shall also su support social development programs aimed at reducing illiteracy among rural households and farmers to increase the adoption of new technology. We shall develop curricula in our educational system that shall equip students with a mindset, knowledge, and skills for agricultural education. Mr. Chairman, my overall vision for Ghana, agriculture-led growth for transformation of the economy, will be achieved through innovation, value addition, and entrepreneurship for self-reliant, wealthy, and a healthy nation. In the next seven years, the population of Ghana is expected to increase by 5 million people. There will be more mouths to feed. I missed global economic and health crisis, conflicts, and an ever-changing environmental climate and other threats. It is imperative that we use science, technology, and innovation to accelerate the growth of agriculture. I believe I have provided data to show that agriculture can drive prosperity. The need for Ghana to buy into a long-term strategy that drives prosperity for all is critical. The key pillars that I have outlined as critical success factors will inform a clear vision for a medium to long-term strategy to develop agriculture for the prosperity of all of us. Agricultural development in countries like Ghana should not be addressed with ad hoc measures. To achieve sustainable development, the National Development Planning Commission would be taxed to put before the AMT, that is the Agricultural Management Team, that I have proposed a long-term vision for agricultural development. What I shall do is to take full responsibility for the agricultural transformation agenda in Ghana and ensure that we prosecute a long-term strategy for agricultural development backed by required necessary public resources. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have learned what I have learned working with Ghanaian farmers in the past six years, especially, is that they need little persuasion to be called into action. <clears throat> the minimal incentive of the FAG subsidy and others was enough to generate unprecedented growth in the agricultural sector. 8.4% in 2021. Never happened in the Fourth Republic. Thank you. Please. 
such hard work of the Ghanaian farmer represents a resource that the nation ought to tap into to get us out of the clutches of borrowing to finance our development. I'm appealing to all of us that we go back to the land because it is the land that bears civilization on earth. And it is how we use our God-given land that will take us to the status of the first world that we all wish to become. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I must reiterate here that agriculture is a means to our end. The Tree Crop Development Authority and the other institutions outlined in this talk can potentially generate substantial export earnings to fund industrial development, finance social sectors such as health, education, housing, infrastructure, roads, among others, to reduce our dependency on external sources of fund. We have hope in this country. We can build the Ghana we want through agriculture. I thank you all for your kind attention. Yes, yes, the sound innovation is appropriate. Yes, thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the future of Ghana's economy. Thank you, perfect delivery, excellent presentation. And this is the future of Ghana's economy. A lecture delivered by Honorable Dr. Ousu Afiye Akutu. We thank you, thank you. Shall we all take our seats? Thank you, thank you. Shall we observe some silence here? Yeah, okay. All right, it's okay. All right. Too much noise, please. It's okay, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, please. Let's observe some silence here. It's okay, it's okay. Sike, it's okay. 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 Another round of applause for our distinguished speaker, Honorable Dr. Usu Afiye Akutu. Would you say it was a State of the Nation address in 2025? What we observe here is similar to State of the Nation address in 2025. The delivery, the presentation, the delivery, the presentation, indeed, the analysis are all on point. 
And then I'd like to commend the Akoto for President team for this wonderful location. This organization has been put together by the National Coordinator of Akoto for President 2024 team, and the leadership of Peter Oti Dako. Thank you so much, Peter Oti Dako, for this colorful event. And of course, my friend, Red Wine Isa Alasa, aka Khalifa. Thank you so much for your support. And of course, my big boss, Mr. Sasu Mensa, head of the organization. Thank you, Sasu. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dr. Koto kept referring to Mr. Chairman. And indeed, we have Mr. Chairman here. But before I introduce our chairman, this is a colorful presentation. This is an excellent presentation. And I'd like to invite my sweet sister, the queen of poetry, the queen of spoken word, Aku Sika Frimpoma, for an excellent poetry in honor of Dr. Akutu. Ago, ago, ago. I don't wrote on tons and sign.